Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing Swords. As always, I'm Andrew. And I'm here to bring you the biggest scoop on the hottest ticket in town. That's right, it's festival season and we are going to give you the inside track on, on the, the hottest yeah. hypothetical festival in the world. But if anyone wants to throw money behind it, just at, at the get off. I've get seen one. I could be a uh, scumbag I'll, millionaire. I'd quite happily... Uh, design a real one. I mean, I feel like it. I feel like it fits my profile. What well, scumbag millionaire? I'm just missing the millions. Is that like the opposite version of Slumdog? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess because he's quite a nice guy, quite a sweet guy, quite an honest guy. Whereas, not this guy. You come from wealth. Um, not this guy. Yeah, basically unscrupulous. I've had money, so I don't need uh, to get it. Sell your nan for two bob. Did? Why do you think I've got no nans left? <laughs> I thought they died, Jake. That's what the papers say. <laughs> Where you sold them to? That's uh, the official story. Who'd you send them to? I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. I, all I would say is, if you've got a dog, they've probably eaten them. You know, right. that's not... Wow. <laughs> well, that took a dark turn early. Um, Had to repay big money. So, yeah, guys, uh, this is an official, I can say it, Jake episode. It was his idea. He's the one bringing it forward. And, uh, yeah, so let's see how it goes. You're just setting me up to throw me under the bus. You basically just kind of climbed. If it's shit, guys, by the way, it's like tied me down in the road and then climbed into the cab of the bus and revved up the engine. You've not actually gone (laughs) over me with the bus yet, but you're very much setting me up for it. Yeah, as I feel like you would do if the situation was in reverse. I well, that's the thing. I don't ever have to claim that they're your episodes because they're all your episodes. (laughs) No, they're our episodes. We do this together, regardless of whose idea it is. We make the magic happen together. Right, but they're your idea. (laughs) <laughs> well, it started with me. Yeah, yeah. starts. With, it yeah. all starts with you. I'm trying to be humble here, Jake. I'm trying to say it's. I'm trying to sorry, pick you up. Sorry, I'm trying to um, say I didn't realize what you're going for. It's a team exercise. Humble is not really an emotion I'm used to. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. You're like, yeah, why would team, you not want to take effort. credit? Yeah, why wouldn't you take it? <laughs> Even if it's not your idea, fuck everyone else. Because I'm also protected if it goes wrong. Smart. I'll go down. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. So yeah, we're. Uh, I mean, I don't know quite how we're going to do it, but we're going to go, I assume, bit by bit and work out how we would create yeah. the ultimate festival. So listen, for us, so I'm I've guessing. got a lot of, you can see there's a lot of... Jesus, I've never I seen mean, Jake prepared. They're not that always that. Um, solid. You know, That's a lot fair. of them are spilling to the others. Um, first off, I think we've got to decide where in the world or in the country are we having I this I thought festival. about this, right? I think it needs to be in the US. Do you? Yeah. I know we have a big heritage of... Um, uh, what you call it, festivals over here, but we have very poor laws when it comes to certain drugs, and I just feel the festival would be a lot better with some of those drugs available. Yeah, but I don't want our police to start killing our festival goers. <laughs> Why would they don't kill half them? My, because we're fucking lefty, not like <laughs> most festivals right. are left wing love fests. Yeah. Right? They're filled with all kinds of people from like, the, the, you know, the gays, the blacks. We get them all. Wow. Okay? <laughs> yeah. That is just a breeding ground for a police shootout. Okay. But why, why would the drugs also, make any difference? Well, well, the drugs, I was thinking more, not so much the police, but the drugs, if, if people take drugs and it doesn't go well, like people have well, paid enough money for our drug, tickets. I think it would be a very weed-friendly festival. Uh, you, there's always, there's every, like <laughs> Coke <laughs> no, and, and MDMA are always present. On, at no, but I'm not festival. worried about those. Those are dangerous drugs. I'm talking about weed. It sounds like a really weird sort of like children's show. <laughs> <laughs> what would the name of it be? Well, our drugs, <laughs> uh, our, our children's TV show. Yeah, about drugs. I don't know, don't do bad drugs. Crack in the gang? Crack in the gang. Well, you, you wouldn't want to encourage crack. No. We're saying crack's right. a bad gang. Could it be something with Smokey? Oh, we've, we've had Smokey and the Bandit. Can we have something like... Smokey Smoke. and the Panda? Smokey, yeah, Smokey and the Bad Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have the same ring to it as Smokey, Smokey and, and the, the cool, Panda. Smokey and the Cool Kids. I don't the, the cool kids anyone that drugs. calls themselves the cool kids are not one of the cool kids, though, are I they? would argue that anyone who's making a, like, pro-weed, anti-cocaine <laughs> children's TV show is not cool. <laughs> well, this is where we're going to fall apart, Jake, because I think it's Because your ambition idea. is too big for us. <laughs> it's not even a dream I knew I had, didn't you? You know what sound like we now? need to get on there? <laughs> is uh, the other guys, when he's like, I'm a peacock, Captain, you've got to let me fly. <laughs> yes. I'll get that. For any time either one of us has an idea, the other one thinks right now it's I stupid. Feel like, I feel like you're peacocking perfect, a little yeah. bit and I'm just not letting you fly. Yeah. You can fly solo on this one. Yeah. But 
my original point. You won't co write this one with me? Ri- You're oh, on no, board with Hitler I'll versus Jesus, but you won't put your name to Smokey in the band. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting where the line is. Inconsistencies, I feel. But my point I was trying to make is, <laughs> yeah. right, It's gonna, they've paid enough money to come to the festival. Yeah. I, I want them to be able to be saved by, like, I don't want to bankrupt them if they just take a bad bit of MDMA or something. Hmm. I just feel like not the healthcare system in America it could be festival. another way to make money through the thing if you have like a dispensary at the venue. I mean, I'm not dead set on it. If you want it to be in the UK, I'm happy for it to be in the UK. I feel like you've just fished out weed friendly play. I feel like you've really put that was definitely on one of yeah, one like of the main things. Main for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, at the same time, I'm not married to it. I feel it. like also you'll be able to find it. As you said, the things will be available regardless. Like, have you ever seen? like clips of Coachella and stuff, which is the big festival in America. I've seen like people running into each other and oh, sort like, of moshing it's, and it's so tame compared to <laughs> like ours, like Glasto or yeah, Reading but and Leeds and that's stuff. What like it's I so tame. You want tame? Because the idea of what Glastonbury must be like like yeah, but you've got like old people tents as well. It's not all <laughs> I go, guess go, I could go. stay with the old people, but then it's more expensive that way. Whereas I feel like if you just make a nice more chilled mm. out like everyone can still get fucked up and enjoy themselves, but like I don't want the British attitude of let's destroy everything at the same time. What about if we could find a country right in the world where maybe even in Europe where weed is, you know, one of the Scandinavian ones because okay, it's not necessarily legal, but they kind of chill on it in terms of they don't they don't Portugal send you to prison for it. Portugal are more about rehabilitation than yeah, yeah, that Denmark's so pretty good on it. Yeah. I mean, I think the problem is, though, going to places like Scandinavia, they're quite expensive. So I think probably for the idea of feasibility, we should keep it UK. Yeah. Yeah. So England, Scotland, Wales, North, South Wales. I mean, Wales jumped into my head, but I've only ever been there once. I've not seen a lot of I think the farmland in Wales, and particularly North Wales, Mm. is just crying out for something to bring the economy that way. Like, we could be... The resurgence of the Welsh economy. I think look, you know, they got no miners. No. So let's festivals. bring them. So let's bring them some drug taking miners. Right. To so what we're saying in a mining village in Wales. North Wales. I'm saying yeah. What about that like really one. long town? The one that. Uh, the go, 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 go. Yeah. Do you know it comes a shot? <laughs> I'm not going to write that down. <laughs> what I am going to write is Disgusting. long <laughs> Welsh name. Everyone knows what we're talking about. That weatherman who bangs it on telly. Wales. Good on him. Location. Do you know what? For that guy on the on the weather station that was able to bang it out. <laughs> just for him. And I think that meant a lot to him. Yeah. I think he's probably listening now and it's made his whole career worth it. Yeah, he absolutely. He feels pretty, pretty justified in his career. Yeah. Um, presumably, we're going to go traditional festival route Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, yeah, I guess I, I, d- I, not, I don't really know how festivals work because I know some of them go for like a week, don't they? Yeah. So let me ask, so let's, let's, let me ask this. Where do you want to start? Well, we've started. We've, I put we've three days as one of my so, preferences. Yeah, so three days, month, Friday. Yeah. Three day, Friday to Sunday. And I think it's like most festivals, you know, we're going to be open like on the Wednesday. Yeah. And we're going to be uh, probably, we'll probably stay open on the Monday just so people can chill out maybe even tuesday yeah just give them a chance yeah um so i'm gonna write that down open wednesday close monday or tuesday monday do we just go like sunday night big finale and then no monday, tuesday because then yeah it gives them a day to sort themselves out and get the fuck out Don't and the thing is that, also I admit, because yeah. it's in rural wales the transport links might not be able to facilitate hundreds of thousands this of people. This is where we're going. Excellent thing. So now, transport links. Right. Do we run? Now, first of all, we're going to have to talk to the government and try and get extra trains to whatever town that is. Yeah. Right? Now, do we run an the extra... The Welsh government might even fund some of it themselves to get the tourism in. Do we run a free, as part of it, and I'm just literally making it up as I go along yeah. here, a free, included with the ticket, shuttle service from the station to the festival? Yeah, I think that's fair because to ask everyone to pay over the odd to then get to somewhere that's difficult to get to that we want them to come to, I think, yeah, it should be included in the price. <coughs> A shuttle bus from major um, cities and stations. 
around the country perhaps within a certain distance yeah and perhaps for an extra fee and i think we would have to do an extra fee we can maybe take people from like cardiff or liverpool or wherever the nearest yeah, yeah, main yeah. town is yeah that's what i was thinking right we're very considerate aren't we about our people go us we're pretty cool yeah. we're pretty cool now do you want to go do you want to do you want to leave the the music and the musicians to last and handle the logistics now, or do you just want to get the music the and the musicians shit now out the way and, we'll enjoy and then the handle music it? At okay, the end. so what I'm asking you because let's face it, the people aren't here for the logistics, Jake. They're here for the meat and the bone. Do you know what I mean? Um, okay, so do we have uh, so food wise? Yeah, what food are we thinking? Well, I sort of like what some of the festivals are doing now that they've got like a co-op at the festival. There's like a yep. pop-up co-op and things like that. So I think those sort of things so are essential because people can get bits and pieces they need to put like a pop-up supermarket pop shop. supermarket. Um, Possibly times two so people have got a bit of a choice. And it yeah, also yeah. handles the... You could the have uh, one at one end of the festival, one handles at the other. The, 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 work, uh, the footfall a bit better. Yeah, yeah. So it's not all focused into one area. Um, I'd say the sort of a variety of food stalls that aren't overly expensive but offer a variety. So things from pizza, hot dogs, but this burgers, is the thing: do Chinese. we do we do we do we offer things? And I'm saying no, but do we offer yeah. things that? Do we only offer things that like hand can be eaten out of a basket? And a well, I guess depending on space, we could have a selection of like maybe pop up restaurants. By which I mean food trucks that have chairs and tables and things like that. You could allocate space for that. Sort of like a like a little box park almost. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's a good style to do it with the uh-huh. benches and the stalls. Hmm. I think box park is quite good to be fair. I just think it's expensive. Yeah. That's my issue every time I go there. And then half of the restaurants tend to be closed whenever I go as well. And affordable. Yeah. Food. Now, I'm going to say we don't have any mainstream vendors on site. No, I think it should be given to smaller businesses. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to write that down. Now, do we have... Um, so we're going to have, like, places for tents. Yep. And we're going to have places for, like, you know, sort of caravans. Yeah, maybe a little so more glamping. Yeah, a little yeah. more. Um, how close do we want those to be to each other? Obviously, this is all dependent on the field we get. And I think the they should be at two separate ends because then that way the people with the cars aren't at risk of mowing down any uh, people that aren't coming by car. Well, or I, think f- like I, f- I think cars are going to be, car parks going to be in a separate field. Okay. But this is just for the people um, that are fancy living. I think farms. again, probably opposite ends of the park because the people that are paying more aren't going to want to be around. The, the reason ones. they're paying for it yeah. is to not have that. Yeah. I think so. I think right. they should have seclusion. That, that perhaps they've got an area that you can only get into if you've got their wristband, for example. And the hoi polloi have another area. <coughs> How do you handle hookups? Hookups? What people banging? Yeah, like because if you go what right, do you mean? How do we handle it? Come back to my yurt. And we got someone there going, well, you've not got wristband. You're not meant to be in this area. Uh, or do we do it pretty? Do we just allow people to police themselves? Or do we just have, do we oh, have people there on point. guard? Or do we just say, do you know what? You know, put a little bit of... Um, I think we should tell them, like... <coughs> I think we've got to be pretty cool about it. Just apply a bit of yeah, I think leniency. The way you'd handle it is, yeah, <coughs> let people bring people in. But if they start causing any issues or security, turf them out. Done. Yeah, but I think <coughs> you can't cop block. Co- can't I think cop at block, least man. one person in the group, yeah, coming in should have a band. Yeah, I think that's fair. So if you're going to yeah. meet someone, I at would their say probably someone's not allowed to bring in more than two or three people. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna meet at their yurt, yeah, they have to come out and get you. I think we're keeping it to threesomes, really. Threesomes like maximum. It. Uh, the way I like it. Yeah. So threesomes welcome. <laughs> Yep, that's how we do it at Cross and Swords. So are we just calling it the Cross and Swords Festival? Well, that's the thing. What are we calling it? I think the Cross and Swords Festival feels quite on brand, considering we're Cross and Swords. Crossing Swords 
Yeah. Best of all, now for those watching on and probably listening, you're not able to get. I am taking notes. He is taking because notes because what I don't want to happen is us to be going back going. Did we agree on that? Did we say that? Yeah. Did we not say that? Yeah. Um. So I want it all here covered That's so that fair. we can. I think so far it. we're quite in the same mind. I think it'll be interesting when we get to music. Music is going to be such the spreading, uh, the splitting thing. Now, do we have um? Now, how many, how many stages, how many stages and tents do we want? And here's why I'm I asking. I mean, what's the norm? Because here's what I'm asking. Because here's do we have um a tent that's just uh for like stand up and debates yeah. and panels. Yeah, I did think of that. Okay, <coughs> and do we have also here's I I had an idea of a small tent. That's for like an open mic thing, so people have to sign up in advance. Yeah, but it's like a. I like that. There's no I'm into that. anyone can turn up, not. and we'll provide like a guitar and a piano. Yeah, yeah. or whatever, or, an, or a keyboard, and we'll just say, "Turn up, go for as it." As long as you booked a slot. Yeah, oh, I like that idea. Turn yeah. up and give it a go. Yeah. Um. And yeah, obviously, I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking stage wise. So you've got a main stage. Yeah. Absolutely, that's going to be the focus. That's going to be the, all the big line acts. Like, yeah. yeah. Then you've got like a sort of secondary stage where there's just a something different being offered. Okay. Yeah. You've got to have for me like a a ravey tent. Yeah, I guess so. You know, kind of DJs and. <coughs> so we're not pinning the festival down to protect particularly one sort of I don't th- well this is the, this is what we yeah. discuss, are we? No, I think to be honest, to get the volume of people you want in, you can't have just one way of doing it so i think yeah you've got to have a variety um so yeah i think that's fair have, I th- have a few little stages you know, i think so here's what i'm saying what i'm saying right and do you tell me yes or no and you go off it so i'm saying main stage yeah other stage yeah. second stage um <coughs> a tent for debate and, debate and stand, stand up. up a tent for the ravers yeah. and the, the drum and bass and all that business yeah, yeah, yeah. um a more acoustic tent that yeah. I guess also offers open mic slots. Yeah. Maybe we could double up those. Yeah. Um, and I think an alternative tent where stuff's in there that's just kind of shit you hear on Radio 6. Do you know what I mean? The kind of shit yeah. that you're like, is that music? The sort of, I don't know. The really small artists that are just going to be happy yeah. to be there. Yeah, and like even just beat poets and shit like that. I don't know if I want spoken word at this festival. I, d- I mean, that's all just going in one tent as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. That's just going in. All right. Well, that's the part of the... Festival that's for the non cool kids, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, not I'm not slamming people that write uh, spoken word. Some of it can be okay. It's just I don't. So quite that's understand. what I've it's got. Me. I've got six six tents and stages. Yeah, how are you with that? Anyone you want to add? Anything you no, might? No, I think any more it would feel a bit too much. I think that seems like a reasonable amount. And if you pad. I'm going to write these down. Right, okay. Um, so, guys, what have you all been up to recently? You know, how's your week been? What have you been up to? We want to know. Let us know. Um, at CrossingSort19 at gmail.com. Excellent use of the time. You can let us know on Twitter, at Sword Crossing, on Facebook, at Crossing Sword. And uh, you can find us on YouTube now. You just have to search the name of the episode and Crossing Sword. And it's also in the link of the description of this episode every time um and also we want to know what sound effects you'd like what ideas you've got we're always here for agony aunt so yeah just get in touch now here's something i was going to suggest to you as an as a, a kind of thing do we offer a a tent or a place that offers kind of um classes and workshops so we teach people how to manage their money maybe we teach people like sign language no it's not what this no you don't is. want any of that no, There's no that's learning, not that's no not what a festival's there for jake it's for people to go and get fucked up and listen to music and eat food and sleep in a tent they're not there for self-help and i think we've g- i think we've got to have a, a section of the medical area Right. We'll have s- a few smaller medical places around, but one main medical tent. Yeah. And I think we have a section dedicated it to it just to bad drugs. Yeah, just that's to fine. People who have had a bad batch of whatever. I'm not going to want people to die, so yeah, go for it. So. Got to look after the people doing drugs, even if they have brought it on themselves. Unless it's weed, right? Well, uh, there's not that many sort of side effects that would cause you to need med- medical attention on weed. Not that I know about these things. I've never smoked it in my life. I don't know why. Straight you're off the bat, like paranoia. Yeah, I don't know what 
you're saying, mate, and, and I'm illness. panicking now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want the police knocking on my door. I'm not up to that sort of shit. It's just rude. Fine, I'm into drugs. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to open this up and go. we're going to go back into it. Do we have a fun fair? A fun fair, what, for the kids? Yeah. This or not just not just the kids. I was going to say, this like is a no-kids festival. Not, you know, not just kids, but like, you know, kids people, love, people love a bit of a mi- little roller coaster or kids Ferris wheel or shit. Us. So no kids. No kids. Well, that literally rules out one of my questions. Does it? Yeah. What was that question? Um, do we have like a, a parenting point of so shops that offer, which they can get from the pop-up Why? supermarkets, but like shops that I offer would like ask any formula parent and that's nappies. taking a small child or a baby to a festival, but also like what the fuck are they doing with their lives and why is this like a good decision? But also like drop-off points where you can, ju- you know, creches, daycares, so we're just going no kids. No. What, how do you, what do you define as a kid? 14? 13? I would say 16 needs to be the threshold. But I feel like I'm going to push you on this a little bit. If I mean, you if can't ban legally, up, you can't come to this festival. It's not an orgy. It's going to be clear. Like, we're not running a sex <laughs> That's club. That's not what I'm hearing about festivals, bro. Maybe I just you're think, doing festivals I wrong. just think there's a lot of good shit to young people. It'd be gutting to get to like 14, 15 when you consider yourself to be an adult and then be told you can't. Maybe kids are only allowed in the posh area. Yeah? Yeah, not for general admission. But, like, again, are we putting, like, a limit on it, like, 12, 13, 14? I don't know, mate. Am I being harsh? Am I being horrible to people with children? I think so, because I think if we can offer some kind of, like, crushes and parenting... It just sounds like a lot of effort to have to do that for them. It does. But but uh, let's just go no kids. Let's just leave it at that, okay? We're not, we're I'll go we down to 14. Do 14. I'm happy with that. I think that's a um, fair compromise. Clothes shops. <laughs> People love clothes and they're going to Yeah, we could sell up. crossing swords merch. Also, yeah, merch. Definitely merch tents for yeah. various acts and stuff. Yeah, merch. which we get a cut of. Only something like 5%. We're not greedy. Do you know what I mean? Just a little taste. And what I would say, what about charities, charity shops? Yeah, I'm all for that. A selection of charity shops. Yeah. I think we'd have to let the charity you work for have one. If we must. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, or at least have a presence. I'm going to suggest as well that the raving tent goes 24 hours. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Because let's be honest, the people going in those tents go for... A long time. Yeah. What about uh, photo opportunities, signs, monuments, things that are going to get people taking pictures, spreading the word, crossing swords, there's going to be some crossing swords, right? There's going to be two swords yeah, crossing. Yeah, I think, like, if we're putting stuff like, I don't know, the Brighton Pier photos and things like that, <coughs> I don't know whether that's, uh, I mean, are we concerned about whether we're a classy festival or... Well, all I'm thinking is that no, I mean not personally, not not at all. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, at like Glastonbury, yeah, they have the big, f- you know, Glastonbury sign sort of flowered out, and everyone wants to go and take a picture with it. Everyone wants to go and in yeah, Amsterdam, so in the city centre, similar. they have the big red Amsterdam. Everyone yeah, yeah. wants to go and take a picture. They've with actually it. moved that now. It's on top of a building. Yeah, I saw that. Mm. Um, yeah, it's not where it was when I went. No, it's moved. I think it was like right by the right. So yeah, I'll, I'll be anyway, happy yeah, with something like, like that, there. but nothing. <coughs> I don't. Yeah, stuff that linked to us and perhaps some brands that pay a bit of money, but nothing too over the top. Do we give out? And this again, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Given yeah. that we're crossing swords, do we give out little foam swords to everyone who comes into the festival? Depends on our budget, I guess. We could do, but like. Yeah, foam swords would work. I mean, this type of thing, there's no budget. They'd have to be uh, biodegradable in case they get dumped and yep. biodegradable foam swords. So bio. <laughs> degradable. Foam sword. Foam. With a QR sword. code to the podcast love on it the with sword. A QR to the pod. Um, I absolutely love it. Okay. I think. So let me just go through this and tell you what we've got. So, the Crossing Swords Festival yep. is also when? I mean, it's got to be summer, hasn't it? Is that, is but that yeah, not but when but festivals? You know, festivals kind of run from like May to August, you know, yeah. or September even. 
Um, I think do it out of the school holidays. I think those early fucking kids can't come early. Earlier, personally, I think sort of like yeah, June. Yeah, I'm fine with yeah. I would say like late perhaps out just before the holiday season starts. Perhaps Um, not for Christmas holiday season. I mean, like summer holiday season, like mid to late June. Yeah, I think that sounds good. The weather will still be decent. It'll be improving, but not too hot. So, the Crossing Swords Festival is going to take place mid to late June in Gogogo. In you know, do you know what that could have been? It I don't know. I might nailed it. Maybe like (laughs) thirty percent even I've got in there. Yeah, um, it's going to be uh, a three-day event th- where all the acts run from Friday to Sunday. Yeah, except we're going to open on Wednesday to give people a chance to get in, settle yep. in, set up, and we're going to close on Tuesday to give people a day of yep. rest. How afterwards. long are we giving each act to perform? It will vary because I, I don't know we'll how the run times that. work. At Generally, festivals. people give like f- forty-five, fifty minutes, and then there's like is a that to the very quick. Ten, no, the headliners tend to get. I mean, like. At Glastonbury, as we speak, and part of the inspiration for this, I mean, like, fuck, every time I do a fucking one, it's mine and one of my ideas, it's so yeah. lazy because I've just seen something. Like, remember <laughs> we did the episode that it was your birthday? And yeah. I was just like, happy birthday, let's talk about birthdays. Yeah. And I've just spent the weekend watching Glastonbury. Like, let's talk nose. about a festival. So, Kendrick Lamar ran for about two hours. Paul McCartney did like really? two and a half. Fucking hell. Yeah, Paul McCartney went for like two and a half. So, the headline act gets a little leeway as well because, where especially where we are, there's going to be like such a little need to control the noise. Yeah. So the last act, the, f- the act Can before it, do whatever they like. have got to finish on time because the next one's got to get yeah. on. The last act, the headliners can just go. But if they decide they want to do another hour, we're if they want to do like hour. Springsteen in his prime, and they want to go, I'm going to do a four and a half hour set. I'm doing a four and a half. They can do yeah. it, and then I'm you might just watch the crowd. You might watch the crowd dwindle down about two a.m. Yeah. But I think that's. Yeah, I'm fine time. with that. Um. Yeah, we open one day. We we're gonna have we're gonna speak to the government and the transport. And we're gonna get extra trains put on to the yeah. nearest train station. So this just say theoretically everything we need for this to work works, like the transport and everything like yep. that. Yep. And then we're gonna offer. Uh, oh, sorry. There's an important issue that we haven't discussed: toilets. Well, toilets. This is the thing. Toilets. We've got to go because it's one of my the biggest reasons why I don't want to go to a festival. We have got to go Port of Luz. Yeah, Port of Luz is fine, but the and amount. Port of I think we've got to have enough for half of the people attending to be able to go to the bathroom at any one time. Well, I reckon. I reckon we put it. I was going to suggest a scale of about ten to one, ten people to one toilet. Because if you think about, it, just doesn't seem like enough. So, like, if you think, you know, there's usually. About let's say about one hundred twenty thousand people at the big biggest festival. Yeah, about yeah. one hundred twenty thousand people. That means you need sixty thousand toilets if you did it my way. Yeah, and that's a lot of. That them. is a lot of toilets. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, realistically, you're not going to get that many. I mean, even like out to Wales, twelve thousand. Yeah, is a lot. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that sounds more realistic. Yeah. But what sort of ratio? Because you can push for more. I mean, it's a hypothetical festival. Like, if we say everyone gets I their own, I just think in an it, ideal world, yeah, that would be the ideal that at any one moment everyone could go for a shit if they needed to. But I would, I would, I would say ten to one is about a good ratio of toilets to people. Yeah. And I'd split them half. No, not even half. Maybe like. I mean, the posh people get their own toilets separate. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah. Yeah. I would say forty percent of the toilet totals mm. in the sleeping areas yeah and 60 percent yeah by the sort of between the stages and the um food mm. it's a hard one to work out maybe not even that maybe, maybe a third, a third that's the, exactly what i was in thinking beds. in each area a third just oh. like a third in the beds third by the food third by the stages yeah I think that sounds like the fairest way to do it. So, because toilets is a big issue, especially for that many people. Yeah, definitely. No, it's on my list. It's on my list. Ten to one lose, and one third stages, beds, food. Yeah, because when you eat the food, that's going to be when you want to go as well. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. So people can come, we're going to put on extra services, we're going to go run a free shuttle service from the station to the festival. And back to and the back station again. they were um, brought from. We're also going to put on, at an extra cost, so you have to pay for them, Right. coaches from 
the nearest major cities. So Liverpool, Cardiff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Given that we're in sort of like mid North yeah. Wales. Uh, yeah, we're going to have two pop up supermarkets. Yep. In our place. At either ends of the festival. Um, we're going to have a selection of affordable foods that vary in their. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to cater for the vegans, vegetarians, and everything else of the world. So yep, whatever yep, they're absolutely into, just full vegans and vegetarians yep. and dairy free, and also let's have gluten free because that one's uh, that's one that gets overlooked. Let's have a gluten free food. Yeah, plan. That, that's on brand for me because uh, so. my missus is currently gluten intolerant and she's starting a diet of no gluten. So it's fucking so hard because everything's like everything, everything has gluten. It's bro. not even that it's everything. got gluten. It's if you read the box, it says like maybe cross contamination <laughs> yeah. from the factory. Yeah, gluten free vegan. Yeah, we're going to cater for everyone in that sense, just not for those um, children. We're going to have yurts and camper vans at one end. Yeah, what we'll d- we'll have what we call, I mean, it can even be separate from the posh people, the high rollers area where we look after or the in other people. Or in other words, posh people at one end, scum at the other. Yeah. Um, and we're going to... I mean, like, look, ultimately, we'd be in with the scum people. I mean, if we actually made this festival, we wouldn't. We'd be in the higher rollers area. Yeah, it's not a festival. We people. can be wherever we want to be. Absolutely. But if we were attending this as just scum, we would be with the rest of the scum because that's what we are. Yeah. Um. On the other side, we've got... Uh, also, I think all our acts get to stay in the posh area. If they're yeah. staying. If there's a lot of them are just going to be on tour, so they're just going to come do their bit and go. Yeah, and I imagine that's what a lot of them do. I know there are some that will stay at the festival and yeah. Have I mean, a good I watched time. an interview with I think it was Noel Gallagher, mm. and they were like, because he's on tour, I, th- I guess from the interview, and they were like, you know, where are you off to next? And he went, no, I'm staying. <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to watch these like Pet Shop Boys are playing. I want to watch Pet Shop Boys. He's like, I've yeah. got you know, fucking whoever on. So he's yeah. like, no, I'm, I'm going to see it out. He yeah. seems like someone that would go. A lot of them do, yeah. you know. A lot of them do stick around, but a well lot they of must them love can't. music as well. Well, that's to do thing. what they do. When you watch, you know, talking about Glastonbury and, and Springsteen came on as mm. a special guest with Paul McCartney, as did Dave Grohl. Yeah, but when I'm I might have to watch that. When I'm looking at Springsteen in particular, and seeing him kind of like fan out over it, and it's like fuck. You forget that these big, huge superstars are fans themselves. Yeah, well, funny enough, being a fan of Dave Grohl, there was an interview he did recently. And he talked about that he got his daughter into the Beatles at a young age and she became obsessed with them and was listening to all their music. And he said over the years he's unbelievably become friendly and reasonably close to Paul McCartney. And he happened to be near his home one day and said, can I come round and see you? And he's like, fucking course you can. You're Paul McCartney, you can do whatever you want. And he comes in and his daughter was in another room and just walks in, freaks out. And she ends up apparently playing the piano with Paul That's McCartney, unbelievable and he cool. just starts performing in their living room and um, like teaching her how to do bits. And he's like, "I'm stood there going, what the actual fuck?" Because it's just as big for them as it is yeah, for anyone and you, else. You do forget that these superstars who have played these huge stages yeah. freak out just well, as like much everyone as we do, else once upon a time. It's a hundred percent their fans, but also like work wise, a lot of them are going to be on tour and stuff. And it's like yeah, they're yeah. making money, man. They've got to leave to here, yeah. and they've got to be in Amsterdam. But you've got to make the sure they're the comfortable They've got to be in well. Oslo by tomorrow. Yeah, and we'll have space for people like them to bring their massive RVs and stay in those as well. Yeah, definitely. Because in this rural town in Wales, there is a lot of fields and a lot of space, and we'll make it work. And we've got we've got a we've got sort of like guards on the posh end. Yeah, we're going to be pretty lenient. Yeah, but as long as one person in the group, yeah, has a band, we're fine with it. We're like we fine. said, maximum of yeah, like three people to one band. But we're basically going to say that we're basically going to tell our guards. If it looks like they're you know, getting lucky, be very be cool. lenient. Be, be cool. very lenient. Only really, don't even profile. Don't even be like, oh, they look like they're gonna cause trouble. Yeah. Only if they actually do cause trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If no one's yeah. causing trouble and someone in a group's got a ban, let whatever have a good man, time. just kind of let them go. Yeah. Um, we've also then got uh, six stages. We've got a main stage. Yep. We've got an, uh, a second stage. Yep. We've got an acoustic and open mic stage. A rave stage. We've got a rave stage. Or tent. A tent, which is going to be a 24 hours. Yeah. We've got an alternative tent, which is going to be all kinds of weird shit you're never going to find anywhere else. Yeah. And we've got a <coughs> tent for stand-up comedy and sort of panels, debates. Yeah. We've got uh, a few small medical tents dotted around the place, but one main one, and it's going to have a section specifically to deal with bad drugs. Yes. I 
bad cuts of things and and yeah, being able to pump trips. stomachs and yeah. things like that. Um, we're gonna have uh, no one under the age of fourteen. Yeah, at this te- at this festival. So sorry. To I mean, you could change my mind on that if you wanted to. I don't know how set on that you are, or how annoyed you are that there's no. I children mean, again, allowed. I would say maybe we tell the we tell the guards on the door on the gate be a bit lenient you can apply a bit of flexibility you're not going to stand there asking for passports and well stuff. the only problem is if, you if someone looks if we young. market it as a no kids festival there will be people that go because it's no kids so to then allow kids in yeah but i mean if someone looks really young question it but if they look like yeah. they're just about 14 15 yeah just i think they like could get away if they're it. prepubescent do you know what i mean if they've got those silly little moustaches <laughs> i mean actually that's a reason to in. not let them in I don't know. I had one of the yeah, where I was a bit of a dick. <laughs> um, merch tents. They're going to sell crossing sword stuff. We're yeah, going to put a moonlight on it. Yeah, we're going to have some charity shops. They're going to sell all kinds of stuff, clothes, whatever they want to sell, shot glasses, yeah. anything, whatever, whatever they want. want. Um, photo opportunities. We're going to have some crossing swords. Yeah, that people big, you know, sort of statue. I'll tell you swords. what, five percent of whatever we make from the festival will be split equally amongst the charities. Well, did you know this about um, Glastonbury about? Michael Levis, that he likes to start every year yeah. on zero. Okay. Um, and he literally, like, so apparently a few years ago, he says obviously they shut for a few years. I think it was like, I think the interview I read was from like 2015. Mm. And he said it got to the sort of, sort of the end of the cycle when they had to start looking at the next one. And they had yeah. like, I think they had about two and a half million quid left in the bank because they oh gave wow. it all to charity. That's what they yeah, do. Yeah. And he literally said, they went, well, we've got two and a half million. And he went, no, give it to charity. Give it to us yeah, some charities. Yeah, we'll start again. He went, give it to a couple of charities. Yeah, because he wants to start again. He wants to start yeah, fresh. Yeah. And every penny. Yeah. Every penny goes to charity. Well, because then he you gives are giving the most a, you possibly can, He gives himself you? a £60,000 salary. Okay. And he doesn't take a penny from the festival. No. Yeah, and 60 grand to put on that sort of show every year. And um, the stress and time that must go into organising it. I don't think you can begrudge someone that. I think we. I think that's what we do. I think we'd give ourselves a salary. And yeah, give that's the rest fine. More than five percent. Then I was being quite greedy. I think, but then I'm. I'm not doing this festival for money. So no, give it all away. Yeah, and I'm. You just coincidentally don't look too much into it. But mm. I am going to set up a couple of registered charities just before we launch the festival. Okay. It's don't look too deeply into it. Like there's nothing okay. dodgy going on. Right. Like, I'm. You know, if what the police ask me, I'll just tell them nothing. Uh, just charity. Okay. Just good, good, s- They're good giving work. to someone who doesn't have money. Good work for good people. Okay. Which, I'm good people. Yeah. I mean, I we've established you're not. I mean, the fact you're going to set up a fake charity to find money fake. from okay, a charity. The charity is real. It's fraudulent. <laughs> but it's not fake. It's a real charity. Right. It's a charity in all but name. Yeah, but it's it is a it's going to be a registered charity. <laughs> but don't look too much into it. Like I said, don't look too close. And it'll be that. registered in Bermuda or somewhere like that. Oh yeah, like yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, the Isle of Man. Yeah, Seychelles, something yeah. like that. Switzerland. Well, that's a good one. I like Switzerland. Yeah, beautiful yeah. country. That's why you've been going there. <laughs> it's been a long yeah. con from the beginning. For sure, you know. <laughs> you didn't you just think of this you've when never you really heard Glastonbury was on. You've never really paid attention <laughs> to the fact that whenever I go out there, I you go out with a suitcase into and I come a back empty handed. <laughs> You love me into making a podcast. Plan a long term vision. And you're an accessory. Of course. Because you <laughs> planned the festival which benefits my charity. Yeah. God damn it. And I'm not even going to get anything out of it other than a salary every year. No, with that, you know, we've limited ourselves. Wow. Well, we've I'm limited, getting, limited ourselves. Gig, yeah. We've limited. How much are we sending to this offshore charity tax haven? Oh, like, you know, a couple hundred mil. Not wow. much. Not much. What percentage are we talking? Of the profits. Oh. Not a lot, mate, like 20 or 30. Fuck it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a, a healthy amount. I think you're going to jail, Jake. <laughs> yeah, but rich people jail. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same as poor With people jail. With the money jail, you can't you access from that. jail because it's offshore. <laughs> this is, this is, you, I only need to get one festival under my belt before they catch me. Right. And I'm sorted. You think we're going to make that much money from this festival that you can just run away forever? No, I don't run away. I've got enough money in the bank that I can go to rich people jail if they catch me <laughs> on the second festival. Right, okay. And what happens to me? I just rot in jail and die. No, I think you'll be all right. I'll get you a good lawyer. <laughs> well, thank you. Like, 
most house arrests. I'm going to sing like a canary, though. Maximum I'm going to turn arrest. you in immediately. I mean, uh, you don't really need to because this is going to be out there this in the public episode. ether. Yeah, this episode no, is we're, here. We're a bit suspicious. And they go back and go, oh, he just admitted to it. Shot myself ago. in the foot because I can, I can never commit any fraud now. No, because they'll just come back Because they will episode. just come back to this and it will appear in court yeah. as evidence. Damn. <laughs> Played myself. Yeah, you've ruined it. Uh, so we're gonna have we're gonna have some some crossing swords that people take pictures with. We're gonna give them t- foam swords that are biodegradable with a QR code on the side that yeah. take them to the podcast. And we're gonna have a toilet ratio of about ten people to each toilet. We're gonna have a third by the stages, a third <laughs> by the beds, and a third by the food. Yes. I would say, at a glance, um, and I will just check my notes to see if we've missed anything. But I would say we've set up a pretty decent the festival basis so far. of a pretty decent festival all we need now is singers are some acts yes now let's talk big ones yeah because so i think all the little acts we don't worry can about they only for themselves. have one headliner per night yeah right and do we have like a kind of you know how gl- i'm not going to keep banging on about glassy but <laughs> i've just watched it like do we have like a legend slot you know, where we get someone who's really old and wouldn't command that's a stage on the their headline. own. That's not the headline. You know, yeah. like, so, like, at Glastonbury, they take it tea time Sunday. Okay. So the, the headline comes on at, like, half nine. Yeah. But they come on at, like, five o'clock. Okay. And they do, like, an hour and a half, you know, as a... Sounds reasonable. Yeah. I'm on board with that. So we have, like, as long a as not second. taking a headline. Also, so can, I su- can I suggest that on the main stage, because it's on the main stage, yeah. that on perhaps the Friday, right, or maybe the Saturday, we have, as well as a legend slot on whatever night, mm. we also have a slot for a new act that yeah. otherwise, in their career, is nowhere near playing the big stage. And yeah. giving them the opportunity to get up there it depends how much time, like how long are we going to give each night? I would say because that would. Well, I say the mu- the music should start at about two o'clock. Because the problem is, a new act won't have an hour and a half. No, no, no. A, a new act, I say forty minutes. Okay. Something like that, half an hour maybe. Half an hour, I think, is where minutes, we're at. So, main stage. Because I just don't think a new artist is going to have enough quality songs potentially to um, do it. I mean, they might get the odd diamond in the rough that does, someone like a uh, Tom Grennan or someone like that that has a few bangers that people like. I hope Tom Grennan can play our festival. Not in a headline spot, but I hope that he can play our festival. Yeah, I think he'd be up for it, to be honest. Yeah, I like He's him. a good bloke. So, we're going to give a new act. When are we saying the new act can get their slot on the main stage? Uh, not right in the beginning. That feels a bit like... Maybe Saturday? Yeah, Saturday, probably middle way through the... Three, four o'clock. The show. Yeah. Four, four o'clock. Yeah. Because in that way, people have had a few hours to get the most of the crowd in. It's going to build a bit more for the headline. Um, so, yeah, they'll get a decent sized crowd. And our own legend slot. When are we putting that? I like the idea of Sunday. Tea time point, Sunday. Because it gives people something to look forward to over the weekend. Do you know what I mean? It'll keep people interested. And we're giving them, what, hour, hour and a half? Yeah, I think that's fair, hour and a half. Depending on who it was. Like, if it's someone like Paul McCartney, be like, yeah, mate. Have an hour and a half. You're and fine. Let's say again for like four p.m. Yeah, which is nice easy. Yeah, and then all other, all acts bar headliners, one hour. Yeah, yeah. I think again. I think as a except basis, that's s- correct. Except for but I think you would change it like each year depending on what acts you've got. How yeah, good do you think they are? How much know, time you want to give them? Because you might. This doesn't apply to the the, the panels and the stand up tent. The stand up tent. Yeah, we'll yeah. probably only give like twenty minutes. Yeah, I think twenty minutes to half an hour is a good set to give someone. Yeah, so stand up and panels. You probably need about forty five minutes. I'd say an hour. And an hour, yeah, yeah. An hour stand up. So I'll keep them because they're an act at an hour stand up. Yeah, twenty thirty minutes. So I would say let's we can maybe discuss pre headliners, you know, yep. the ones that go on just before. And we can definitely discuss the opening, who opens each day. Yep. So let's discuss that. Who who do we get to open Friday, two o'clock? Who's gonna kick off our festival for us? That's do we have also I think it's gotta be us maybe first something. of all, we introduce it, yeah. we come on and introduce it. So uh, we introduce topless. 
they go on the stage topless. Potentially even in speedos. Friday. Do you know what? Mama like that. Mama like that. Just a shame yeah. I actually don't know where my speedos are. <laughs> um, That's not true. You put them on all the time. So, uh, dream thing, right? Who's going to kick it off? I really don't know, actually. I didn't think about the opening it, It's not going to be a headliner. No, it's that's the problem is you want big. it to be someone decent. I'm thinking maybe someone like a, like a Tom Grennan. Doesn't necessarily have I'll to throw be. A name maybe into a mix. someone like a, a James Bay, even. I, I'm going to throw a name um, into the mix because I think they've got a couple of songs. Definitely one that will just get the crowd going. Yeah. The Proclaimers. No. No? <laughs> you don't think you get everyone singing 500 miles? Yeah, but they could only do that. What else have they got? Oh, they got those. I really like the Proclaimers. All right, they can play a different slot. They can play a different slot. They we'll have the air. Proclaimers. No, no, I'll let you have them. We'll have them at I don't know whether they they're who what, I don't know that's open the opening it. act. Um, what about... I'll take you to kid as my uh, What's his name? Lewis Who's the Capaldi? guy who does um, Sean Paul? Uh, yeah, Sean Paul. I don't know if he's, if he's right to open the whole thing. <laughs> I just love the idea of him doing cheap frills. What about Lewis Capaldi? Does he have anything upbeat, though? His um, songs yeah, are a bit more be, serious. Quite upbeat, um, I'm right. a big fan of Lewis Capaldi. I think um, it's brilliant. Um, oh, the first one's difficult. Maybe. Like I said, it's got to be someone upbeat. Yeah. A bit poppy. It's sort of like Maybe what we're doing is we're doing a long, a, bad idea. a long um, set list. And then the first song on the set list has got to be bang. Yeah, it's got to be. What about The Killers? Yeah, but they've they've headlined Glastonbury, haven't they're they? They're not headlining as. Yeah, you're right. They have headlined those. Stereophonics. Oh. Tom Jones. Tom Jones is a headline or a legend. Yeah, he is. He, he is he's definitely. Not he can opener. definitely take our legends act. I mean, I might um, even suggest him. For I the mean, we can spot. just fill this with a dream list, but I want to try and keep it the relatively realistic. Yeah, like to a d- within a certain bracket. Yeah. Um. Oh, who's got like bouncy music? That doesn't. That's never really tended to be my. Area of expertise. I've always been dark. Um, <laughs> yeah, someone who doesn't write in too many minor keys. No, I mean for some reason, my chemical romance just came in my head, but I don't know if that's. To I've got one. Th- I tell you, um, and I don't think they'd be in the headline area either. What about Fallout Boy? Oh, would they not be a? They're quite big. You know, they were second when I went to see them. Recently yeah. in the in the three man tour, yeah, but that's if up against Green Day. Green Day yeah. are bigger than them by miles. Um, we'll cycle back to it. Okay, we'll cycle back to it. Okay, Friday night, right? Who's headlining? Because this is oh no, do you know what? We've got to take it as three. I We've like got to take it Friday, Saturday, Sunday because Sunday's closing out the show. Sunday's closing down the festival. Yeah. and I like a bit of variety. I like a bit of for our headlines, sons. not as a headliner, <laughs> not as a headliner. <laughs> What about as the opener? Mumford and Sons is the opener, I'll take. Yeah? All right, I'll, we'll take, put that. I'll take that then as well, because I feel like they've, then, they've opened it up. Do you know what I mean? They've got some quite upbeat music. So we've got Mumford and Sons Mumford to open. Mumford Sons opening. I think, let's just throw some names around for the headline app. Yeah, yeah. I think someone like Stormzy deserves a shot, because he brings some great energy. Or he Dave. does. It's just not my cup or, of tea. Or Dave. Like I know that's just not the bring whole point of it. It's just some great energy. And uh, it's just I would actually different. prefer Stormzy opening, if I'm honest, compared to headliner. I think Stormzy a headliner or a pre-headliner. Yeah. I'd rather you put in pre-headline on the Friday. than as the. Because the reason I say it is because I don't, I don't want it to be all... What about Snoop Dogg? I'm up for Snoop. There's Snoop the Friday. To headline, Snoop to headline Friday? Yeah. I'm up for that because he can bring out guests And as then well. have Stormzy as his pre? Yeah. Yeah? Is that fair? And also, yeah, because he can bring out guests. Because yeah. that's the thing, like, I don't know if you've seen this, like, but people, obviously we mentioned there, bringing out guests. Dave, who I mentioned, <laughs> brought out uh, yeah. the kid from the crowd a few years ago. That was great. It was one of my favourite festival yeah. moments ever, by the way. I don't know who Dave is. Dave, he's a, do you know what? He's a rapper. I know I, I know he's a but rapper. He is but he's incredibly like talented. So watch, yeah. watch his performance at the Brits. Okay. He starts off on acoustic guitar. Yeah. Then he gives this like electric guitar solo. I've seen him play the piano at the Brits <laughs> the year before. Like he's a so really he's awesome talented. <laughs> he's a really talented dude. I mean, honestly, didn't didn't expect it. I really like Dave. Actually, he, uh, the last uh, album really grew on me. I'm not gonna lie. When you first said Dave, I thought you were talking about our Dave. Yeah, I was like, when did he um, bring a kid out of a crowd? He licked a window in front of a kid once and scared it. Uh, no, no, Dave, Dave. Yeah, I like Dave. But um, blossoms. This Who? Blossoms. 
full of blossoms. They did that song Charlemagne, uh, and they did a song. You're gonna have to sing it for me, bro. I'm not gonna. I'll send you a link later. Okay, it's fine. I'm not in a singing mood, which I normally am, and I'm sorry for that. I feel like I've let the crowd. You have let us down. The audience down. You have let us down. And do you know what I have to say to that? Get stuff. You know, I accept it. Yeah. I accept it. But um, they brought out Mel B and they did a cover of uh, Spice Up Your Life. Okay. Which is kind of dope. And I love that at festivals where yeah. you just get people crossing over. Um, yeah, I liked the song with Mel B in, um, is it Brian Adams? When You're Gone? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Um, okay, so Fry is a sorted. Oh, yeah. he's not. There's a lot of space to fill. We can Any acts we throw in, we can just say, yep, they're in. No, they're not in. But Friday, Would Bon Jovi be a headliner? Nah, no. I but think we he could maybe throw him in somewhere on Friday. As much anything, yeah. yeah. Bon Jovi might. could headline the other stage, the second stage. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I wouldn't be against that. No. Jake having technical difficulties here, folks. That's logistical issues. Yeah, I wouldn't be against Bon Jovi. Not as bad as my one when I ended up just having to hold the mic for the rest of the episode. Yeah, because this is the thing: we've got a second stage. And it's a big stage, mm. so we can we can still fill some some acts on there. Well, what we'll do, we'll make we'll keep in our minds a list of people that are like, all right, they're second stage people. Yeah, so we stages. have we covered Friday now? Stages. Friday, I'm pretty sure we've done the yeah. main stage. We've 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 kicked off the thing with uh, Mumford and Sons. Yep, and then uh, Stormzy's going to go on just before Snoop Dogg closes out the day. <laughs> um, Saturday. Right, so it's second day, almost there. Everyone's feeling good. Who I are we think kicking we've it got off with? Uh, I don't know, but I feel like we've got to close the day with someone poppy. Poppy, okay. Because I think Sunday's got to be someone. If you're going to say Tay Tay, I'm going to slap you. No, no, but I think Sunday's <laughs> got to be someone rocky. Yeah, I mean, I know who I'm going to say. I want. I know on who Sunday. you're going to say, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw around a few others. Yeah, that's fine. Um. But yeah, who do you have in mind? Who's Poppy? Because um, Poppy's not really my thing. Someone like Lord or Billie Eilish is very good. I don't know who Lord is. Act. I'm not a massive fan of Billie Eilish. I've heard a few of her songs. It's not really again. It's not. That's not the point, I guess. But but um, yeah, someone like Lord's pretty good. Someone right. like Bieber, Sheeran. Sheeran, I'd be fine with. Sheeran, Sheeran could do it. Yeah, Sheeran could be the headline. Should say Sheeran headline Saturday. Yeah, I mean it feels obvious, doesn't it? Like yeah, once it, it once it said it. Yeah, like, yeah as soon okay. as you said Ed Sheeran, I was like, yeah, if you go and pop. Saturday. Also, guys, um, just to be very clear, let us know what you think. Yeah, would you come to this festival? You know, yeah, like that. I would <laughs> love to know. Like yeah. once you said it, would you actually be interested? In, in this, this festival, festival. not that we're heard actually going to put it together, and you read about it, and you saw, you know, you've d- well, you've heard about it, you've yeah. listened to this pod. If this was a real thing, would you yeah. be up for it? And if not, what would what would it take to get you here? If you say bring kids, and I'm afraid you just can't come. Um, Sheer and Saturday, <laughs> I think definitely headlining that yeah. kind of works. Are you going to do a pop themed evening that day? Or? Not necessarily. I just think for the main headline act, I want something kind of. Something kind of hip hoppy, mm. something kind of poppy, and something kind of rocky. Yeah, you know, that's fair. just a kind of good mix. Yeah, in there. Who would we? I put think Snoop, by the way, is a great. I'm. I he was one of the ones Snoop, I wrote down earlier. But obviously, you know, he did, he did the the Super Bowl or appeared at the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, and Dr. he has Drake done festivals Bowl, before, and he like there was yeah. one when I remember because he was on Joe Rogan. That's the reason I know about it. Um, and they showed a clip of him like. Is that your cultural reference of Snoop Dogg? No, but it's the only real in-depth interview I've seen with him. Like, most of them tend to be, like, 20, 30 minutes, whereas, like, it's just a Joe Rogan thing that you have someone sat there for a couple of hours. So you just get a bit more of him. Like, Snoop performs on the podcast throughout it. Like, he's got new music, and he's, like, he's airdropping it to Jamie in the room, and they're playing it, and then he's performing whilst on it. And he's just sat there getting high the entire time, (laughs) obviously. Um but yeah, and I've seen that he can do those sort of performances. So yeah, that's why I wrote them down. I'll tell you who I want on. Only cause they've only got one song, not even for a thing, just on one stage. On the other stage yeah. probably at some point over the weekend. Okay. Is um, Fountains of Wayne. That's fine. You I just want a festival of people singing Stacey's Mum. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I One of my outside ones for somewhere, I don't mind where they go, as long as they get to perform is Wheatus. Yeah. 
teenage dirt bag. Yeah, little like the moment, on their cover of the, and the reason is the because genuinely, yeah. we went as a group of blokes to a busted concert. Right, um, can they be on at some point on yep. the stage as well? Yep. Um, but we were there, and one of their opening acts, and they weren't on the bill, so we didn't know was Wheatus. And for anyone who don't know who Wheatus are, they wrote teenage dirtbag and it was just such a great moment everyone loved it true and yeah, it, is a it is a banger and they um do a good cover of um little respect little respect so yeah uh yeah cool yeah saturday i still don't know who's opening saturday mm. yeah because i don't suppose it matters too much who kicks off a day no what about someone like um james bay or, yeah, if or they even capaldi yeah let's have capaldi have capaldi Capaldi can bring Bay on at some point. He likes doing that. They do that for each other. Bay guest. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to some hookups at this festival, by the way. I'm looking forward to some some surprise slots. You know, okay. surprise guests like James Bay coming on for Lewis Capaldi. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah, Capaldi. Sorry. That's my f- I'm, right. I'm English butchering and bastardising his name. It's all right. You could be right. I'd just say Capaldi. I could be completely wrong. No, I think he does say Lewis Capaldi. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I'm loving some, and I want some random hookups. Like for Snoop, yeah, I want someone who I would never fucking expect. I want to say to him when we pay him huge amounts of money to come, be like, look, just bring us a surprise. One of your big friends, I just want, even like, if it's for one I song. I want like Springsteen to come out <laughs> and do a number with Snoop Dogg, and for Springsteen to no, have I want a Snoop like song. him to casually bring along Dre, and they do still Dre or something like but that. But I want something left field as well. Yeah, I want something that I'd be like those two. Yeah, do you know what I mean, I want him to bring out Taylor Swift. Why That's not? where I want Taylor Swift at this festival is to come out with Snoop Dogg and to be like, "What the fuck?" If is anything this that I'm could watching? ruin my experience and of Snoop Dogg, it would be Taylor Swift. Every single person in the audience being knowing that they are. I don't know why I'm being so horrible to Taylor Swift. I don't actually have really an harsh. issue with her. It does seem really harsh. Yeah, I don't actually have an issue with her to be honest. It's just her music's not like some of it's all right. But, but the idea of all those people knowing that they've witnessed a moment yeah. that they've seen something that no one else will have ever seen. Yeah, I mean, you could choose other people. Like I don't know. Anyone else other than Taylor? But that's fine. Taylor Swift can guest with Snoop Dogg. Sunday. Yeah. L- we we've got a legend slot on Sunday. No, yes. we can't fill the new act slot because they're a new act. They haven't emerged yet. No. But the legend slot we can fill. Now I'm gonna. I've like I said. I think there's a few here that we could we could suggest. Yeah. I like I like Tom Jones for it. Mm. Maybe. Who else could there be? What other options have we got? Well, you know, there's a lot of. Um, you know, you could have some like a Bon Jovi, not as good yeah, as Bon Tom Jovi Jones. could do um, a legend slot. Who else could we have as legends? It's difficult because most musical legends. I think he'd be good in it. The Stones. Yes, yes, but uh, yeah. Can I have Tom Jones somewhere at this festival? Yes, absolutely. Can he maybe even headline or pre-headline the other stage one night. Yes. And Tom Jones on the stage. Yeah, because I like Tom Jones. There's nothing wrong with Tom Jones. I just don't know whether he's main stage material. Do you know what I mean? So what we're saying, Rolling Stones. I mean, yeah, if they're on the table, you can't not have the Rolling Stones. (laughs) What is wrong with my mouth tonight? The Rolling Rolling Stones. I can't say it. Don't know what's going on. Rolling Stones legend slot. Now this is a big one. The headliner. Who is closing out? So who's opening on Sunday? Oh, that's right. We haven't got an opener on Sunday. Yeah. Um. So we got Rolling Stones as the pre headline. So who are we having before the Rolling Stones? And I uh, think I'm trying to think of someone you know from like across the pond and stuff. Someone who's got a uh, yeah, because we've know. got the I guess the British rep. And on Is the main stage as well, you know, we're talking the big stage. Yeah, it's got to be someone fairly. What about? I don't know if it really fits. I was going to say someone like Adele. Adele, I mean, Adele's more headline. Yeah, I guess you're right. Adele's got a headline the other stage. Yeah, and she has headlined the festival, I believe, hasn't she? Young Glass, though. Yeah, so no, we can't put Adele. Headline. She can close out on the other stage on On Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, I think that's fair. Um Oh, who could we have opening it? Again, should it be someone a bit different from who's likely to be closing and the legend so. slot? Because um, the person who popped into my head was someone like Lady Gaga, and I don't know why I thought Lady Gaga. But I just thought she'd put on a bit of a show. What about Lily Allen? 
She's got some good tunes. Mm. Is she that big though? Is she like deserving to be on the same stage as the Rolling Stones? Well, I'm not throwing Lily out the shade. Like, I actually quite like her. But just I'm imagine just thousands of people singing "Fuck You." Or, <laughs> in fact, they did because she yeah. joined uh, Olivia Rodrigo on her set. Well, oh no, I don't want to want it to end up being an all rock day Sunday because it's not. You want a bit of variety. There. You want a bit. Of yeah, I keep leaning towards people. Oh, I could choose them, but no, I can't. Just because that's what you listen to, and that's yeah, what the yeah, artists yeah. that come into your head. Um, Britney. It's, it's tough. Britney. I'm not for Britney. Britney. All right. Britney opening yeah. Sunday. Now yeah. this is followed the big by the Rolling Stones. <laughs> this is the big debate. This is the one I know who you're gonna fight. Yeah, for. so I'm gonna let you start start us off because I think everyone listening knows who I want. Um I I would say from the kind of rock pantheon. Yeah. Um, you know, people like, like I said, I've I've just recently seen Green mm. Day. They were great. And that Billy Joe Armstrong can work a crowd. Yeah. You know, I know Dave Grohl can work a crowd, but Green Day, I've got one, one of their live albums. They're fucking awesome. Yeah, I and do you know what? They that. closed on um, Jesus of Suburbia as mm. well. And like the full thing was like, fuck, this is good live. Yeah, it's such a good song live. Um, um, most of their songs are quite good live. Yeah, and he just works the crowd. Yeah, no, he's really brilliant. Well. Um, and they've just, they've nailed what they do. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I'm trying to think of other acts that I've even got on my phone. Um, Led Zeppelin, they're, s- they're not even still about, are they? No, Robert Plant's still performing on his yeah. own. I'll tell you who I could have as well, who we haven't had, but who could headline the other stage one day. Yeah. Eminem. Yes, he was on my list. Is he? What Have, have you got your list? I know it's here. Do you no, want me to it's hand in front it of you. <laughs> Can I, is it on the page before? I think so. It might be. Headline. So we've got Adele and Eminem headlining the other stage. Nice. Which, to be honest, is worthy of the main stage in itself. It is. You know what I mean? Like, uh, part of me thinks maybe do we swap out Britney? Oh, nice. You've gone for some comedy as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Breakfast. Breakfast place. We've got to have a breakfast place. Yeah, for food. You got to have breakfast options. I'm a big breakfast guy as well, and it's got to be a breakfast place that serves breakfast all day. Breakfast place all day. Because, look, let's face it, not everyone gets up at the same time, but most people, when they're hungover, like a bit of cooked breakfast. Um, only weed. Actually, <laughs> 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 I don't know. Can I just tell the cat, like, okay, the camera's never going to pick this up, but this is the category it's under. Must-haves. <laughs> Must-haves. <laughs> only weed. <laughs> 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 uh, that was absolutely superb and I honestly couldn't have hoped for anything better when I opened it up it's just a <laughs> what's, the, what's the list of must haves because the bottom the one says only <laughs> is enough toilets for at least half of the attendees which yeah. we've sort of workshopped when we've <laughs> yeah. really come round um, showers yeah yeah. it's got to have shower blocks so yeah, I'm just going to add that to my list yeah I love that only weed <laughs> I accept that people are going to be taking drugs at our festival. Yeah. It's, like it's just an ine- inevitable thing. Breakfast, yeah, various foods. Um, a proper barbecue, like a smoked barbecue. Yeah, so like a place that does proper American-style, decent barbecue, not like <laughs> burnt sausages and burgers. Um, Showers, zero litter policies on your must-haves. Yeah, but I don't know how you actually enforce yeah. that. Yeah, it's very difficult. It's it's just because you see like the images of what happens after a festival and all the mess that needs cleaning up and like the fields. Well, of do you know what really made me laugh is that someone shared a picture from like twenty thirteen, I think it was twenty eleven, yeah. no twenty eleven, of Glastonbury. And they were like, "Oh, this like you know, save the earth, lefty hippie things. Look yeah. at the state of the place." And it's like actually, and someone posted, and you can tell because the design on the stage is mm. slightly different each year. Yeah, and someone was like, "Actually, this is what it looks like this morning on Monday morning." Clear. Oh, really? Absolutely clear. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they were like, Fair enough. Can you not just spread full? Because I know there it? are. Um, there's a couple of charities actually that go to Glastonbury and pick up yeah, all the tents for the yeah. homeless. Yeah, absolutely. And that's um, the kind of thing I think we've got to employ here oh, at, absolutely. at Crossing Swords Festival. I think we should have it as part of the budget that we pay people to do that for the charities and just give it to the charities. They don't actually have to and do the work. And then only weed, that's your um, 
<laughs> last right, but not least. Can I can I run way. through your list of comedians? Yeah, yeah, that please you've do. Suggested Adam Rowe. I'm yeah. not that familiar with Adam. He's Rowe. a Liverpudlian comedian. I I watch his podcast that he does called Have a Word. I tell you what, if we're doing Liverpudlians, Chris McCordland has I got to know. be on there. Blind guy. Ah, uh, was he on Britain's Got Talent? Was that him? Mm, I don't think so. He might the, have been. There was one blind. I don't know if he was Liverpudlian though. He might be. He was very funny. Okay. He is very funny. Uh, if yes, you, if, if you ever get a chance, check out any of his stand-up stuff. It is good. Yeah, Bill Burr. I'm up for Bill Burr. Yeah. I like a bit of Bill Burr. Tom Segura. Again, I'm not that familiar That's with his fair. stuff. It's, it's, I've seen bits. bits again, I've I listen to like. one of his podcasts. Russell Howard, Russell Brand. Are you gone for the double Russell? I was also nearly put Russell Kane. <laughs> Triple Russell. <laughs> we should just have, I think we should, if we're going to do that, let's just have 20 minute sets, Russell Hour. Yes, we call it that as well. That's what we bill it as. And we, I've, I've, I've got to be honest though. If I'm if I'm doing that, I'd say Kane on first because he brings yeah. the energy. Well, Howard does as well, but Kane on first. Yes. Howard on second. Brand on third because there's no way I can trust Brand to stick to a time slot. <laughs> yes. No, that's absolutely fair. And also, to be honest, at the three of them, he is technically the biggest He's name. The biggest name. So that would make sense. I'm absolutely all well, for the Russell Hour. Yeah, I like I kind of like the Russell yeah. Hour. I, I think we now. should email them and pitch it to them. You guys, you guys should, should put on a show. You guys put on a show, just the Russell Hour. Yeah. Um, at, here we go, Three Day Max. Um, yep. Yeah. Foo Fighters. Yep. Which obviously you're fighting for the for I want the big them headline Sunday slot. headlining. Uh, Green Day. Yep. Yep. Phil Collins. Yeah, just, I a, just wanted people choice. to be able to hear, not as a headliner, but at some point, just maybe even on a legend slot on the of, second bit stage. Bit of Phil. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can Bit of in the air slots. tonight. You just want everyone to be like... <laughs> just imagine a crowd of people d- simulating the drums. Air drums. Red Hot Chilies. Yeah. Yeah, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They were playing at the stadium They've the night after um, I went to see Green Day, Fall Out Boy, Weezer. Yeah. And I've got to be honest, it was like... If the stadium wasn't so shit to get to, yeah. or shit to get home you from... You would have gone. I would have gone, because I think... That, I think yeah, it's a London stadium you went to, isn't it? Yeah, I can't yeah, believe we held the Olympics there. That's a joke. Me and Liam went... No, no, it's in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? Well, it's... It's there's a pain in the like ass to get to. one tube station serving 80,000 people. How yeah. do you think that's going to go? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that was... It, it weren't great. But the no. stadium... We went there for Soccer Aid. The stadium itself the is stadium really good. Is good yeah. for, like, a venue, and that it works yeah. really well. But yeah, the, and the, the seats were... I was surprised by the leg room and things like that. So, overall, like, the stadium was yeah. good. It was just... Yeah, and the little areas to mingle outside and stuff, yeah. Uh, in the yeah, summer, I wouldn't want to yeah. be there when it's raining. No, it was nice. Because we spilled out into the outside we area. We got there a bit early, and we were a bit hot and sweaty, so we went and sat down in the shade in, on some benches. No, I agree with you. It was really nice. Uh, Mumford & Sons, who we've got opening the whole yep. festival on Friday. Zach Brown Band. Yeah, they're just okay. one of my outside. Again, doesn't have to headline. Just maybe no, no. on yeah, one of the yeah. stages at some point. Alter Bridge. Yeah, just a rock band I like. Shine Down. Again, another I'll rock band who could, I like. Who could be a good, um, a good act? They yep. usually work better at night, but I think they'd probably be fine in the day anyway. Muse. Yes, they're good very live, good, live. good live. Very good. But again, I would put them in the headlining category. Yeah, well, well, they can headline one of the other stages. We can have Eminem, yeah. Adele and Muse headlining yep. the other stages. Do it. So it's going to play that. Uh, yeah, because I like Muse. I didn't like it when they went all... Was it dubstepy they went after? I actually didn't mind some of that. No, it was a bit it's like Linkin Park did an album that was dubstep and it was just like, no, what are you doing? Um, Eminem, cool. Yeah. He's he's in there. He's he's on... He's headlining one of yep. the... Eminem, Adele. And... Uh, fuck, could we just at Muse? Yeah. Headlining <laughs> the other stage. Um... Snoop Dogg. Yep. Who's headlining now the headlining Friday. Him. Yep. Wheatus. Yep. Busted. Who was somewhere in the lineup. Yep. Just somewhere along the day. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a mighty fine looking yeah. lineup. I mean, I th- I'm personally, I'm really. I didn't even attempt to put any heavy metal bands Obviously, in. we've put some, we've been quite generous in because we've put some acts that deserve the headline slot on their yep. own on the other stage. Yeah. Genuinely, looking at this, and if I just run through it quickly, yeah. I would be well up for this festival. Yeah. So we've got Mumford and Sons kicking off the whole thing. Yeah. Stormzy yeah. going on just before Snoop Dogg closes out day yeah. one. And he'll love that as well. Day two, I want to be up nice and early because I want to see Lewis Capaldi kicking things off. Yeah. And then we've got... Um, with a bit of James Bay featuring. With a bit of James Bay featuring. And then we've got... Um, uh, Ed Sheeran coming on to, yep. to close the show. We've also got 
likes of Busted and Wheatus and all these other acts that are there. Dave's definitely going to yeah. play. I'm definitely pushing for that. That's fine. You can have Dave on. Um, we've got on the comedy tent. We've got these ones that you. Ma- we've got the Russ Lauer. Yeah. Um, I also think there's some great female comedians going around. I think Laura Lex is very good right now. I think Sarah Millican's very good right now. There's Sarah Millican, like I don't mind. Um, there's lots. I don't know the other one that you mentioned. Laura Lex. Laura Lex. I don't know her. Very, very funny. I, okay. I like her. You'd have to send me a clip of her. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. And Nish Kumar. I think we could get. Yeah, yeah I like a bit of Nish. You don't know, mind a bit of Nish. I've like not that. seen his stand up particularly. We could get but something, I a like easier, something a bit easier, something a bit light, something like Tim Vine. Again. Something like that. I am not. I don't really know. I think Tim Vine could well. kick off a day because it's just I, joke I, after I joke. I think I definitely like to keep the acts as British as possible in terms of the comedy just because yeah. to promote the British comedy scene. Um, But then on, if we move on to Sunday. Oh, and also. Um, oh yeah, then we move on to Sunday, and we've got um, I can't remember who we had. Uh, Britney Spears is kicking off Sunday. Yeah. Um, Tom Jones is going to come on and do um, a bit on the other stage. Yeah. We've got Rolling Stones on the le- on the main stage. Yeah. For the legend slot. Yeah. And closing out our entire show and our entire festival is the food still up to debate. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other side, on the other stage, we've got Eminem and Adele. Adele and Muse, yeah. all headlining. So if you yeah. don't fancy a bit of Ed Sheeran or I Snoop Dogg, you've got a fantastic alternative. Yeah. So I think maybe Muse on the Friday, so people who don't yeah. like Snoop can go to Muse. Yeah. Maybe Adele on the Saturday and Eminem on the Sunday, something like that. You know, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Cause it's just a, it's just thinking about offering alternatives for the main... Um, yeah, I think that's a good way to do it. There's stage. a bit of something for everyone then. But closing it out, this is this is a big debate. So you this are you pitching debate. for Green I'm Day? I don't know who I'm pitching for because I don't. It's such a big ask. It is to close out the Crossing Swords Festival, the, I think the inaugural Crossing Swords yeah, Festival. And I think it has to be a band that is definitely capable of doing a big crowd, handling a big occasion. Yeah, which I think they are. Yeah, and I think. Foo Fighters is definitely up there. Look, yeah, yeah. I'm just well aware that we often land on Foo Fighters <laughs> because of for me. a lot of things, yeah. and I, d- I don't want to necessarily be, be. Yeah, yeah. No, if if you can give me someone that's genuinely really good, that like if I would accept it if it was Green Day. Yeah, I mean, just I'm on that basis, I do. I think Green Day would be a good closer. I think, but I, yeah, it would just hurt a little bit. I think. Would it? Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Have you got any other ideas, so before we settle? What about... Um, what about this? Green Day, mm. and half of the act is with Dave Grohl. I don't know. I feel like Dave deserves more. I mean, he'd probably be up for it. I yeah, don't know. He'd, he'd be well up yeah, for it. He'll play with anyone. I mean, I mean, that came out entirely wrong, but I think, yeah. Harry Roll at Crossing Swords. Also, we don't know whether Foo Fighters will be performing again at this point. No. We don't know what situation they'll be in. So... Just want to say uh, rippers to um, Taylor, Hawkins. Taylor Hawkins. Our love and thoughts go out to... All yeah, he's really good live as well. He, he, he was a phenomenal live, performer. Um, very talented drummer. To be able to step into a band that has Dave Grohl as the lead singer, who's a legendary drummer, takes a lot. So that's my pitch. <coughs> My pitch what, is Green, Green Day. Day. Green Day with special guest Dave Grohl, and they have to play some. Fo- they have to play some foos. They have to play the big anthemic foos. All right. Yeah. 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 I'll let that happen. I'll be fair. So I can't have Foo Fighters be the answer to everything. Green Day, featuring Grohl, and maybe a couple of the lads from the foos, and some maybe like Pat Smear. Nate. Maybe even Who's. Remy with his keyboard. Um, so I th- I got to say I'd be well up for this festival. I think it sounds pretty good now, to be honest. The one thing we haven't spoken about just before very oh quickly before we end. Chase has got serious price range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jim. I mean, what's the going rate? I don't I don't know what the going rate is for like about two fifty three fifty, and that's for the three day ticket. For a three day ticket. Are we only doing three day tickets? Well, yeah, because nothing's happening Tuesday 
Uh, sorry, nothing's happening on Monday or on Wednesday, Thursday. No, no, but what I mean is we're not going to sell one-day tickets. Oh, we can sell one-day tickets. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think we sell one-day tickets as well. Okay. But I think realistically it's quite difficult to get to. So, so people are going to most likely do I the think, free. I think of the percentage of tickets we sell as one-day tickets, I think maybe like 5 to 10%. Because mm. I think most people are going to come for the free. Yeah, album. I think you're right. Okay. So if the going rate is what, two something? Yeah. I think for the service we're offering... Like with the travel and things like that, I think we could push for like two nine five. Yeah, just under three. Yeah, just psychologically. That's keep for it the under three. that's for the general admission. Yeah, for the up for the posh area, so not even the top area. You have to pay a little bit more. <coughs> Are we providing them people with their own tent? Or yeah, I think we provide the yurts and stuff. Yeah, so. I think you're pushing it to five or six. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you got to double the price. Um, and they're like the medium range. So then for the top, top tier, for like the VIP level, where we'd be staying. <laughs> yeah, like 1100 Yeah, I'm, I think 12 free, something like that. 12. Yeah, 1200 quid. Yeah. Mm. 1200 VIP. I mean, I'd love for someone. <coughs> who's oh. listening to this pod maybe even two of our friends like that we know are accountants no 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 for someone like sit and work out uh, our friend Dave for example or even Tony who are accountants um, to um, sit I love it if they could just based off of the numbers we've given now and how many people are we saying are going to attend I think we can probably get away with let's say for 120,000 yeah, over so the weekend. If if they could go away and work nice out number. roughly off of the numbers we've just given of the prices, if they do like a rough estimate of um, whether it could be profitable or not, <laughs> I mean, we can do a rough. My thing guess now, is like, a no. Let's just let's just roughly work it <coughs> out now. So let's say um, you're probably looking at about hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah. Times the cheap tickets. Yeah. 35.4 mil <laughs> income. But bear in mind, we've got to pay for the land, we've got to pay for the shuttle yeah. service, we've got to pay that for sounds the sounds like apps. a lot of money, isn't it? We've got to pay for logistics. Plus, hang on, so I reckon you've got about five, 4,500 for the fancy this ones. This is a big fucking field change. Are we buying the land we're doing this on? 2.25. So Yeah, I think it's easier, and we can just do it every year. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So we're currently up to... Thirty six point seven, so you're probably looking at about thirty seven mil coming in, right? Um, but that I doesn't literally doesn't include paying for the act. The going well, look, I wouldn't act, include the, the buying of the land within that because I think that would be part of the startup costs, seed money. The, so like the, the first couple probably aren't going to be very profit. The profitable. going rate, so I actually know how much Sharon costs charges oh, for Jesus. a festival slot. How much? He charges eight hundred thousand pounds, <laughs> but he is far and away more expensive than pretty much all other acts. Oh, really? So the rest are more yeah. affordable? There are two acts, and I can't remember who they are, but there are two acts who charge yeah. more per festival slot than he does. Really? I think Lady Gaga is one of them. Really? So maybe Lady Gaga doesn't come and play at our festival. No, not I think she charges 900 or even maybe even a mil. Why? This is is oh, this isn't dollars, though. But yeah, anyway, so you're talking a little bit less. Right. Actually. But yeah. I didn't think it'd be so that Sheeran's much. So Sheeran's one of the most expensive ones. Okay, so the rest are going to be more affordable. The rest, so then you, your other headliners are going to be a bit, but then all these smaller acts that are going to play the stages are going to be, I mean, it'll more add up. More reasonable. It will add up. Yeah. And also I would say we're not going to pay the, um, the, the, the open mic acts. We're no, not no, no, pay. no, 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 no. So we're kind of getting one tenth free. No. The DJs we can stretch out rather than give them an hour. We can give DJs like they do on the radio. We can give them like three hour slots and just because yeah. we're covering twenty four hours. So yeah. We kind of, we'll have to pay a bit more, but it would be cheaper to pay one DJ three hours than three DJs one hour. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so maybe it could be profitable. I mean, definitely, look, we're not going to get all of these names on one bill. Yeah, we are. So, yeah, we it's are. happening. Yeah, we are. Yeah, it's happening. It's do it's I think it's it's do the it, Crossing it, it Swords Festival. Be, Why wouldn't they do it? And it's in like there have to be a lot of planning and then have to be maybe a few cutbacks and a few. Bits yeah, there'll be concessions there. here and there, but it won't be like the Fire Festival. No, no, we won't do it on a deserted island with nothing on it. No, well I don't know about you, 
bro. I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Festival. Festival. I've got to be honest. I didn't think we'd be able to fill this much time. I think the food. But when we spent good, half an hour sure. just talking about the logistics, the logistics. So I was like, "Wow, all right, we're fine then." But it's the bulk <laughs> of it, you know. What we did was we laid the foundations for our festival, and then we got to enjoy. Then we got the music. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I we think if we had the money space. behind us, if so, I mean, I would. I yeah, I think yeah. there's a festival there to be made, and I, I think, think we could do that it. Welsh, because some of the land up there, like this one, like, it's so cheap. Yeah, I mean, yeah. beautiful but cheap. Yeah, um, and it would so genuinely cheap. put some money into the Welsh economy. Yeah, so I think I'm it all could for be it. A and guys, look, that's what we're here for to put money in the Welsh economy. So we're already looking after you. We are. Wow, I liked it. Got your backs. No worries. What's occurred in? Oh, <laughs> there's your festival. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, please let us know what you think, whether you would come to this festival, what you would change. Yeah, what especially now you know how much we're charging. Do you, yeah. you know, I think that's great value for money. I do. The apps for what's that you're there. getting, by the yeah. way, is yeah incredible. That's, if we can pull that off, then we deserve the money. Yeah. Yeah, because to be honest, want? some of the festivals, when I see the lineups, I'm like, meh. And let us know, would you pay for the, would you go for the five to six hundred pound fancy camping? Yeah. Or would you be in the poor people? For, for I the think I'd probably, if I'm just a regular panel, I'm going Cheap. for the regular. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we're VIPs though, so we get the, yeah, we yeah. get the 1200 package. Yeah, we'll get our own, yeah. Oh, definitely, each. I mean, I don't mind sharing with you guys. Share a bit. I don't mind a little, Top little. And tail, Do you bit know of cuddling, what? bit of spooning. Bit of Ed Sheeran, full of a bit of spooning. I can think of worse. <laughs> There's worse ways I to spend your weekend. It's not a bad weekend. <laughs> yeah. And even a bit of Tom Jones. The thing is, there's so many good acts, you can't possibly no. see everything. No. And that's the thing, there will be something that's for everyone. That's the thing festival, you know, and that's why, yeah. that's why it's There'll the be a schedule lot of is my important bro. of trying to make sure that there's an alternative genre on the yeah. on the big headline act. Yeah. So that if you're not into Snoop, if you think very Snoop's good comedy. your thing, there's the, yeah, and comedy just kind of, I think comedy runs from about, Maybe like again, maybe two o'clock is just the, yeah. the general start time for everything around, except for the rave tent, which goes yeah. twenty four hours. And I think maybe two o'clock, and maybe runs till about I don't know nine ten. Yeah. So it doesn't run all the way through. So basically, I think everyone in the comedy tent should be able to. So maybe let's say nine, so that they've then got like half an hour or so to make it, so that they can go and watch the headliners. Yeah, that makes sense. So you can stay in the comedy tent all day if you want. Yeah. Take it in, run an hour, the beautiful, and then go see a headliner. Yeah. I think. Bang. I think we, I think we dream. just perfected. Um, it's a beautiful dream. We've just perfected uh, music festivals, bro. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Would you come? Tell us what would what would it take to get you? I to mean, come? I will come. I just mean, it's an orgasmic lineup. Yeah, I mean, them threesomes are allowed. Threesomes are encouraged. Threesomes are encouraged, <laughs> but use protection. Have sex safely, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you know. We are going to judge you for just having sex with one person. That's how this festival is going to roll. No, I'm, I'm, I don't I think we should on. kink shame. You know, if people are just into that, the one person monogamous thing, that's up to them. It's up to them. I am one of those people, so I have to say that. I saw. I, s- I know what your mouth said, but I also <laughs> see what your eyes said. My eyes were like, help me. Your eyes were like, freeway baby. Freeway baby. Yeah, that's going to get me in trouble. But well, I will. Listen, you talk about bang for your buck. That's another good way to get money. For Wait, you know, bang for your buck. Where is it? Well done. Thanks. I like that. And it's guys, that festival, the oh. Crossing Sword, the inaugural Crossing Swords Festival. Yeah, guys, as always, hit us up. You know the socials. I said them earlier, so we're not going to repeat ourselves. Um, it'll be on the screen as well if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, somewhere along here. Also, by the way, just very quickly, I yeah. assume we're playing the slot. Are we playing a slot? I assume we're playing a slot. You know, even just like 10 I minutes, know, 20 man. minutes. 20 minutes? Okay, I'm playing a slot. <laughs> you're playing a slot. <laughs> I'm playing a no, slot. No, you're not playing a slot. I'm playing a slot. No, not on not. the big stage. I'm not mental. You can be on the open mic stage. Yeah, on the little tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. You're not going on any of the main stages. I might go on the main. I might go on the other stage. No. I'll like tell you what, minutes. if one of the acts decides to take pity on you, it's like, come on, mate, come play the acoustic guitar for a minute with me. That's fine. But you're not going up on the stage as yourself. I'll tell you what I am going who I am going up with. Who? I'm going up with Green Day. If they let you, if Green Day are would. okay I with it. I reckon they would. It's my festival. Do you get it's our festival. All right, I get to do it with you then because yeah, I yeah, get yeah. to perform with Dave Crow and that. Yeah. That's the only situation we're allowed to yeah. do it. That or like literally, the so their penultimate song. Yeah. They just say, ladies and gentlemen, the 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 you know, have you have you had fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what we should call the guys on. that are gonna the have closing fun? Closing song and we should pitch it to Green Day and Dave. Should be times like these. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then we just go, you know, they go. You can play an acoustic guitar. They go, Andrew and Jake, the the creators of the festival. Yeah. And we go, yeah. And they go, now they're going to play with us for a song. Yeah. And I get, I'm not, I th- it wouldn't be acoustic, I think, for the green. I think it would just be air. All right, fine. But we'll do we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it. And then we big close it out. Let them just do we'll that. We'll work close on it out. We'll work on it with Billy Joe and Dave closer to the time. Bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll rehe- We'll have to rehearse yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's the fine. Um, but guys, yeah, as we said, let us know what you think, what you would like, anything you change, and get in touch with us. Come along, and you know, on the panel show, on the panel tent, my final pitch. Yeah. We would. Do an episode of Crossing Swords live. Oh, you'd have to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could even do one live from the side of the stage at some point. Yep. Yeah, if that's happening. Yeah. On board. Well, I think we've given you enough to think about there, guys. Yeah. Enjoy our festival. Please do. Please come, come. along. Bye. <laughs>